hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel so for today's tutorial i'll be using miracle hair in the style wisdom it comes six bundles in a pack just like you're seeing here and then i'll be using a dome cap this will be my first time using a dome cap for any wig tutorial i'm also going to need a thread of course but be careful this thread comes in two types for the tailors and for the hairstylists the hairstylist own comes stronger of course i'll be needing some needles as well i'll also need this band which i would use after i'm done to you know secure the wig on the person's head and a measuring tape to measure out the length of the band i would need and measure some other stuff as well obviously i'll need a scissors then yeah right to the video you would obviously need to set your dome cap properly setting it just makes sure everything comes in place it's very important it's well set after setting my recap, I'm then mapping out the crown area of the recap. Usually the recap I would normally use has a map has a crown area mapped out already. But using a dome cap, I'll have to do the work myself. And I'm also going to try and point out where my closing would end, which is supposed to be at the center. But looking at it here now, I'm saying I obviously didn't get the center. That dot is obviously not where the center is supposed to be. Anyways, I later figured that out as I was sewing on the cap and good thing is it didn't change anything, it didn't spoil anything. Now for the weave on, I folded it into two to get the size I wanted and to actually save time because if I was going to use just one weft, God knows I would have slept on the hair. Whenever I'm starting with the weave on, I like to use the side with the two ends. I'll explain that later. And another thing I like to do is pass the, tr uh, the needle through the weft of the uh, weave on like you're seeing here and not under. I feel passing through the weft makes it more secure. Now, like I was saying, I like to use the parts where um, the two ends meet because it just helps, you know, prevent you from cutting at some point, especially when you're doing the back where you'll be flipping and flipping. Now, I am sewing the ribbon on the crown area of the wig cap and I started from the back. You can actually start from anywhere. You can start from the... Um, from the sides, but here I'm starting from the back. The main thing you should keep in mind is to go in circles, you know, maintain the circle movement, the circular movement, and just continue going in circles. That is the main thing. So on the crown area there are certain areas to be conscious of one of such areas is this very point where i'm sewing presently on the crown area of every week cap even this one i had to map out myself there are four points two at the front and two at the back i'm going to use some images to give you guys a better picture of what i'm talking about and then the front area as well is really important to take note of because you know you need to sew the ribbon as close to the tip of the recap as possible. You don't want to leave any portion of the recap out of the sewing process. Now, apologies for whatever noise you might hear at the background. You know, it is a shutdown. It's the shutdown period here in my country. You know, many people are at home and um, there are a lot of noise going on. Children are being children and playing and all that stuff. Now, to make sure you work better on these points I'm talking of, there's a need to properly place your ribbon before you sew especially when it comes to this point and just like i'm doing here i'm placing to make sure i'm working or i'm moving in a circular direction before i sew i place i sew and that's why there's need for one to be conscious in properly placing and sewing the ribbon on this point because that will determine whether the sewing comes out in circles or not and when i got to the end of course i didn't cut the ribbon i just went ahead and continued i sewed on top of where i started from to you know continue the cycle
so it was at this point I realized that where I thought would be the center and the ending point of our closing was actually not going to be but it doesn't mean anything so obviously guys as you can see I have continued and I have maintained the movement in circles which is really really important I've come to the point where I have sewn everywhere like I've kept up with the cycle and there's obviously no rules for me to sew anymore so I'm going to cut off the ribbon that is remaining but leave a little portion now this little portion I left I will bend it and pass the needle through the weft as you can see it's bent and the needle is passed through the weft now I will then pass the needle down some layers below try and make sure you don't go so down like three layers below is okay I will then take back the thread up from that point to the closure point, making sure I am passing the needle through the weft. The weft of the closure is the main thing here. So at every point you are coming up and coming down, make sure the needle is touching the weft of the closure point. The idea is to hide this weft. Now this coming up and going down, I will do it on different points, like point A, point B, point C, point D, you get not just on a particular point. And then after I am done going up and coming down, I will then finally settle, say, on point D, which is below the closure point. And then do like I'm doing the regular sewing, of which I would at that point then just wrap up my sewing, you know, cut the thread, tie it, and wrap up. So having done all that, I'm done with the closure part of this wig and then I'm just going to pack it up and then start working on the back area. So here I am placing the ribbon on the wig cap, on the bottom part of the wig cap and on other parts of the wig cap. What I'm doing basically is I'm trying to have a mental calculation of how much ribbon this back area is going to take. This level for instance takes much more ribbon than other parts of the back area. And that, and then after having the mental calculation, I then draw out lines to make the sewing process super easy, like really, really easy. This line just makes everything peasy easy. This chalk I got, I'm drawing the lines with a chalk and I got the chalk from, <clears throat> I got the chalk from a tailoring shop. I'm going to assume one can get this chalk from anywhere they sell tailoring products or materials. In all, I drew seven lines. So like I did for the closure part, I folded the ribbon into two and then started from the part with the two ends. Now, if you're like me and you prefer the thread or your needle really long, I like to pass the thread through my fingers like you're seeing here when I'm sewing so I don't have issues with the thread tangling and disrupting my sewing. I should also point out that when you're using a double weft, and you've gotten to the point where you need to flip over. Flip over with the one on the top, which is going to be by your left hand side. It's also on my left hand side. Flip over with it by passing the needle through, flip over with it and then you pass the needle through the weft, not under the weft. In my opinion, I feel when you pass it through the weft, it gets to 
make it flatter. The whole idea of not, of not flipping with both wet is so that there isn't any bulge at that flipping point, you get. So after you're done, you know, passing, after you're done tacking that web, which is on your left hand side, you then carry the one below, which ideally will be on your right hand side. You carry it along and then you keep on sewing. So you guys see what I meant when I said the lines makes the sewing really easy. Like you don't even need to bother yourself worrying whether you are sewing and you know going too high or coming down too low. You get that kind of something like you've taken all that worries, all that stress away when you drew the lines. You are very sure at this point that you're sewing on a straight line. Your sewing is not going too up or it's not coming too down. Like picture when one is sewing weave on on a human being's head you know how they will sew on the weaving now these lines are just exactly the weaving only that it's on a mannequin this time around so usually when i've come to the end of a thread on a needle I will just start sewing with another thread and needle and then tie the new thread and needle together with the old thread and needle that's the one that's almost finished tie it together make sure it's really secure you get I'm just pointing out ways I make my sewing really secure and then after I've tied the both of them together I then cut off the old thread that is, that's almost finished and then I continue with my sewing So this is what the hair looks like after I had sewn on those seven lines. But the person I made the wig for wanted it fuller than this. So I went back in with the extra piece of ribbon remaining. This time around, I didn't double the weft because I'm not trying to make it too full. You get what I mean. I want it full but not too, 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 too full. So I went back in with just single weft and I filled up the spaces that were there. Now, I, I, I filled up the spaces from the top to the bottom. So like I just said, I was filling up the spaces from the top, coming down, coming down, coming down, till I got to the bottom. Now, instead of cutting the thread only to knot it again, I simply passed the needle down to the line I needed it to be. And then I moved it to the exact position on that line where I needed the um, thread I needed to be, which is where I was going to start my sewing from. So here I'm showing you guys the different looks from when I had sewn on just those seven lines and after I had added the extra ribbons. I have finished sewing at this point so I brought down the crown area which I had packed separately earlier 
and i'm running my fingers through the hair i'm also showing you guys the style i want to give the hair so to be sure of the length to cut from to give the wig that fringe look especially if you're doing a custom made wig i'm going to share with you guys my measurement tips here i'm measuring from the center point of the crown area to the beginning of the wig cap which is usually placed on the forehead like i'm, I'm illustrating here presently So I put the wig cap on my head and then using a chalk I marked both ears. Now where I marked with the chalk is where I sewed the band on. This band I measured it with the measurement the owner of the wig gave me. I asked her to measure from one ear all the way back to the other ear. Remember all the way back. Now as you would see this band has loose ends, usually when it's cut it always has loose ends. So this will make the sewing not just anyhow you get, you have to sew across just like I'm doing here. So that at no point does the loose ends continue losing and then the band falls off from the wig cap. So you would need to sew it across and when I say across I mean over the band. Basically how you're seeing me sew it here you get. I usually do the sewing two times. I don't know if I'll blame it on OCD, but it's just my way of being sure the band will not fall off at any point. So I sew from one end and I go back to the other end where I started the sewing from. And I just tie both threads and that's it. That is it guys. So here are the point A, point B, point C and D I was talking about earlier on in the video when we were you know, trying to close the center part of the crown area. And this is the closing guys, see how neat it looks. So we have the final look guys, I hope you all enjoyed the tutorial. Please let me know what you think about the hairstyle in the comment section below and give this video a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe as well. Thank you very much.